So, Honkai Star Rail just dropped its version 2.1 dev livestream, and boy oh boy, the lore bombs for Acheron were nuclear. We'll be looking at it from the Honkai Impact 3rd perspective, and also covering some similarities between the two, because, for those of you who don't know, my name is MG, and I've been playing Honkai Impact 3rd for about 6 years now. I've also been playing Honkai Star Rail since day 1 of release, and I will admit, one of, if not the biggest reason I started playing was because Weld Young from Honkai Impact 3rd is in it. But anyway, back to the dev livestream. They revealed the character's name isn't actually Acheron, and even though they didn't reveal it in the livestream, the name on top of everyone's list is of course, Raiden Mei. Now of course, I'm 99.99% sure that she's not going to be the same Raiden Mei as the one in Honkai Impact 3rd, and Xiaozi even points out that the horns are different, so for context, Raiden Mei in Honkai Impact 3rd ascends to become the Hasha of Thunder. When she accesses her Hasha powers, she has two horns of equal length. In Acheron's flashback, she also has two horns, but the left one is longer. This is probably confirmation that they are not one and the same, although it might kind of be a yes and no situation. So in the story, Acheron tells the Trailblazer that it felt like countless versions of them, alike yet distinct, gave entirely different responses. This probably means that Acheron has seen the Trailblazer in multiple timelines, which would also mean that they are suggesting multiple timelines exist. At least that's the way I see it. What this could also mean is that Acheron could be a Raiden Mei, just one from a different timeline. In Honkai Impact 3rd, there is the existence of the imaginary tree, and through it, it is possible to access a specific point in time. The imaginary tree, theoretically, exists in Honkai Star Rail, though nobody in the Star Rail universe has been able to confirm its existence yet. Now, the extremely simplified TLDR version is that these multiple timelines can exist for a while, but if they do not attach to the tree, they will eventually cease to exist. There have been instances though, where individuals from crumbling bubble universes have left their home universe and started exploring other bubble universes. Anyway, back to Acheron. If we look at what seems to be a screenshot of her Celestia Myriad trailer, it looks like her with horns in a place that looks very similar to Nagazora City in Honkai Impact 3rd. The screenshot, however, does not resemble any cataclysmic event in Honkai Impact 3rd due to the gigantic sword in the backdrop and what seems to be a menacing figure in front of her. The similarity, however, is the city getting flooded in both universes. From what I've seen so far, many have speculated that Acheron's real name will be revealed as Mei and that she might have failed to save Kiana in this timeline, leading to their eventual doom. I, however, think that a Kiana just might not have existed in this timeline and the timeline branched off way earlier. As I was recording this video, the animated short for Acheron dropped. What's really interesting is the video's description. Some players are speculating that this is an abstract way of describing the Honkai situation on Earth, and I partially agree. There are many parallels between Izumo, Akiron's homeworld, and Earth during the Honkai Wars. They say their mortal enemy, the Kami, came to just kill. That was how the Honkai were initially described. They also speak of an edict edge being forged from the bestial body of their enemies, and in Honkai Impact 3rd, there is the existence of the Divine Keys, which are forged from Hasha cores, essentially cores of enemy rulers. These Divine Keys were used as weapons against the Honkai. The warriors of Izumo also had to reach the Takama Divine Realm, which I would liken to the Cocoon of Finality which was hidden in an imaginary space, not visible to or accessible by any conventional means. They then say that Izumo just disappeared. This almost completely aligns with my theory on it being an alternate timeline, except for the fact that if it were, it should be a bubble universe, and bubble universe are not accessible through the physical space. There are two ways this could be rectified. One, Izumo is not a bubble universe, and simply an actual planet that bears extreme similarities to Earth during the Honkai Wars. Two, the records of Izumo could have only come from the parts of the Genius Society in relation to Dr. Primitive, and they could have intentionally or unintentionally left out the fact that it was indeed a bubble universe. My theory on Acheron is that she was one of the frontline warriors battling the Kami on Izumo. If you've played Honkai Impact 3rd, I'd wager she's like a flame chaser. It is likely they lost their fight and her homeworld was on the brink of destruction when she gave in entirely to the Path of Nihility and was chosen to be an emanator. Now I know adventurers speculated that Acheron could be an emanator of finality and many might also think she's on the path of the hunt as she is a galaxy ranger. 
but she has a number of telltale signs pointing towards her actually being on the path of nihility, true to the path she's given in-game. So as we know, Akiran has a lot of issues with her memories. Right after the Akiran animated short was dropped, the Emanator special was also dropped on Hoyo Lab. In it, we find that the Emanators of Nihility are called Self-Annihilators. They're also known to lose parts of themselves on their journey of self-annihilation. One of these aspects are personal memories. Now if we were to assume that Akiran was actually one of the strongest warriors of Izumo before it met its end, she would already innately be very powerful, even without drawing from her path. The fact that she turns white and sheds a tear when using her ultimate might be a sign of her unleashing her powers as an emanator. It's quite possible that her innate powers are keeping the negative effects of Nihility at bay. It is also possible that that is simply the way the self-annihilators function. Visually, from her gameplay, she also has, as we would expect, many similarities to Raiden Mei from Honkai Impact 3rd. I'd say her design is an amalgamation of all the existing Mei battlesuits, including Raiden A from Genshin Impact. The purple hues, the single shoulder pad, the giant sword, the long sleeves, and actually, the domain expansion slasher mode ultimate. The big difference, however, is in her skills dimension crack. This one bears similarities to the Hasha of Finality. In the Hasha Finality's combo attack, we can see the cocoon of Finality in the Dimension Crack. For Acheron, what seems to be a black hole is visible in the crack as well. Her ultimate also brings us to a space where a black hole can be seen at the end of the horizon. If we were to assume the black hole is the Eon of Finality, Ix, it's very peculiar that these skills would show us the source of their powers, presumably in a different plane of existence. So that's all I have for you guys. I'd like to end the video by saying as a Honkai Impact 3rd player, we draw a lot from the material we're familiar with. I would consider myself a Honkai Star player as well, and I respect the source material for what it is. I'm not trying to claim that one is better than the other, or suggest anything of the sort. This is all just out of curiosity and excitement for both games. So what do you think about Acheron? I'd be honored if you'd share your thoughts, opinions, and theories in the comments section. Until next time, this has been MG, and I will see you guys soon. Bye bye